Does anybody else out there feel like it should still be March or maybe April or May, but definitely not September? Maybe I'm the only one, but I feel like time this year has just been really weird. In some ways it has been incredibly slow and in a lot of ways I cannot believe that we are already headed into fall. But since my calendar tells me that we are well into September already, that means that the holidays are just around the corner. So I wanted to make a video for you about how to create a simple, stress-free holiday meal plan that your guests are sure to love. If you're new to my channel, I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I make videos all about making mom life simple. So be sure to subscribe down below if you would like to see more videos like this one. Now, meal planning at any time can be challenging for moms because we make so many decisions during the day that we wind up with decision fatigue and we just don't want to make one more decision in a day. But meal planning during the holidays can be downright stressful because often there are extra people not only for the holiday meal, but often friends and family will come into town a day or two before the holiday and leave a day or two after the holiday. So in addition to planning one big special meal, you're also potentially hosting for multiple days at a time. So how can you put together a killer menu plan for the holiday that your family and friends will love without making yourself go crazy with all the extra work? Well, I'm so glad you asked because in this video, we are creating a minimalist holiday meal plan that won't have you spending every spare minute in the kitchen. I want you to be able to spend quality time with your family and friends while still having an amazing holiday meal. So here's how it works. Step number one is stick with your meal planning routine. So if you have a simple weekday breakfast, like I talk about in this video here, I recommend continuing to do that even if you have company, because especially if you have guests and it's the holidays, you're going to be doing a lot of extra cooking throughout the day. And one easy way to cut down on the amount of time you spend in the kitchen is to go easy with the breakfast. And if you do easy lunches, like I also talk about in this video here, I recommend sticking with that while you have company as well. We do leftovers every day for lunch and I don't feel bad about doing leftovers even if we have company. I typically will double whatever we are making for supper so that we have an easy lunch for the next day. And there's no reason that you can't do this even if you have people visiting. Now, if you don't wanna use leftovers when you have people visiting or you're worried that there won't be enough, you could always have on standby some simple lunches that are easily thrown together and easily cleaned up. Some simple lunch ideas would be salads or sandwiches or even some soups that you can make up ahead of time. I wouldn't worry too much about having huge lunches for everybody because typically around the holidays, people eat a lot at dinner and they might actually appreciate having something light for lunch. And if people are still hungry after they eat a light lunch, they can always break out the leftovers because there are sure to be some. Now for dinners, if you are using my theme night meal planning, like I go into depth about in this video here, don't change up your theme nights just because you have company. This is where the theme night comes in so handy because you will already have so many of the decisions made for you when you sit down to do your meal plan. When I'm hosting a holiday, the only theme night that I change is the actual holiday. So if I'm hosting Thanksgiving weekend, I will only change Thursday that Thanksgiving night from leftovers, which is my normal Thursday theme night, to the holiday meal. And if I happen to be hosting Christmas, I will typically do a different meal for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. But the rest of the days in the weekend or week or however long people are staying will stay the exact same as my theme nights for the rest of the year. So now instead of worrying about starting from scratch and planning the whole weekend out, I can use what I already have and use on a weekly basis and all I have to start from scratch for is the holiday meal itself. Obviously, if you want to start from scratch when creating your full weekend meal plan, you can, but it will save you a lot of time if you stick with the theme nights you're already using. Now, that first step mostly applied to the days surrounding the holiday, if you happen to have company that are coming before or after the special day. So in this next step, we are going to go over how to plan the meal for Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever holiday you happen to be hosting for. The first thing to do when planning the meal is look at how many people are coming. You may have more or less people that are staying with you surrounding the holiday like we talked about, but you want to know exactly how many people are coming for the big meal because knowing how many people you are cooking for can save you a lot of time and money. Now that you know how many people will be joining you, decide how elaborate you want to be with your meal. It can be easy to feel like you have to make certain things for the holidays because you've always had it for the holidays before and you just feel like there has to be certain dishes on the table. But in reality, it's completely up to you. If you don't care much for traditional holiday food and you want to have pizza for your Christmas dinner meal, 
so be it. You can do that. It doesn't have to be what you would think of as a traditional meal. For Christmas Eve at our house, we typically get either takeout Thai food or takeout Chinese food because on Christmas day, I will be cooking a lot and spending a lot of time in the kitchen and I just want something easy for Christmas Eve. And who am I kidding? We also just really love eating Thai and Chinese food at our house and the meal takes zero effort from me and has very minimal cleanup. So don't feel like you have to follow any sort of rules for your holiday meals. Just do what works well for your family. The next step in planning your special holiday meal is to decide on your main dish. I recommend starting with the main dish first when deciding what you're going to eat because then you can make sure that all of your side dishes complement the main dish. And to keep things simple, I recommend just doing one main dish for everyone to share, unless you can outsource cooking the second main dish to someone else, which we will get to in just a minute. Now that we have the main dish figured out, we're going to think about what sides we want to have that will go with the main dish. And remember, it may feel like you have to have all the sides when you're cooking a traditional holiday meal, but side dishes are optional. And especially if you don't have a lot of guests coming, you may want to minimize the sides so that you don't have so many leftovers that will take you a really long time to eat. Think about which side dishes you love to make and your family loves to eat, and then forget about everything else. Unless, of course, you want to outsource the cooking of more side dishes to other people who will be coming. The side dishes that we love to have at the holidays at our house are mashed potatoes, a vegan green bean casserole, and a cranberry sauce. And unless I'm having a lot of other people over, I will just keep it really simple and only do three sides. And now that we have our meals taken care of, we can decide on which desserts and how many desserts we want to have for the weekend. Most people like to have a few different options for desserts, but just remember that making desserts can take a lot of time and energy. One easy way to have a lot of variety with your desserts without spending all of your time making them is to ask each family that is coming to bring their favorite dessert as well. And this will also ensure that no one is disappointed that you didn't happen to make their favorite holiday dessert. And the last step for creating your amazing holiday weekend meal plan is to decide who is cooking what. Since you are hosting, you also get first choice of what you want to make. Many hosts like to provide the main dish for the holiday meal, but it's definitely not a must, especially if one of your guests would enjoy cooking the main dish and would do a good job with it. The next thing to do is to ask for help. Figure out who would be good at making different dishes that you hadn't wanted to make and ask them to help you make them. Since most people don't generally like making decisions, instead of asking them what they want to make, ask if they would make a certain dish. So go through ahead of time and divide things up, figure out who would do well at making which things, and then just go through and call everybody or text everybody and say, hey, would you mind making this for the Thanksgiving dinner, for example. Try to assign dishes to people who would be good at or enjoy making them. And if somebody doesn't enjoy cooking, you can always ask them to bring a salad or a store-bought dessert. When I'm hosting the holidays at my house, I never make the desserts because my mom is able to make desserts that work for my vegan sugar-free diet and desserts that work for her gluten-free diet and somehow she can make it still taste good even with all of that. So I don't even worry about it. I just say, mom, make whatever you want. As long as there's some key lime pie in there, we should be good. And I just don't make any of the desserts. I would much rather make more of the food than have to worry about that. So see if there's a family member or a friend who would be able to take over an area of the cooking that you may not be as good at or may not want to do. In my experience, people are usually more than happy to help out and they actually like to be able to contribute to the meal. If you aren't able to make or delegate all of your dishes, or maybe you just want to break from cooking altogether, you can purchase almost anything that you would want for your holiday meal at a grocery store. Just be sure to place your order for everything you want for your meal in advance because there will be a lot of other people who have this exact same idea. And that's all it takes to create a minimalist, stress-free holiday meal plan. Be sure to hit the like button down below if you found this video helpful, and I would love to hear in the comments below what you are going to have for your holiday meal. And also if you have any tips on just hosting in general during the holidays, put that in the comments below as well. I'm thinking about doing a video about that in the future, so I would love to see your ideas. And if you would like to see how you can work with me personally for creating a set it and forget it meal plan, I will put some links in the description down below. Again, I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I make videos all about making mom life simple. So be sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell next to it to be notified when the next video comes out. I will see you on the next one.